Surely show them uppity Negroes in Atlanta not to mess with the mighty 2nd Infantry. <laughs> Let's toast to our success. Law and order has been restored. <laughs> oh, well, let's hope that the uh, colonel agrees. Sometimes Walt can be a real stickler for rule following and military protocol. And we were given clear orders to remain. Oh, shoot, Andy. We are trained fighting men, and we needed to be there. White women and children need to feel safe on their streets and in their homes. We done right. And it just wasn't right that our regiment had to stay behind. Why should they have all the fun? Fun? Fun. We were quelling an insurrection. We were answering the noble call to defend and protect our society, our way of life. Do not belittle the brave and righteous actions of our fellow soldiers, and, and I for one won't soon forget what I saw. Can you imagine having to live day after day in that cesspool of Atlanta? Everywhere you turn, people have bumping into you and moving fast, and, and all those Negroes. They were everywhere. It just, it just ain't right. Not anymore, they're not. We showed them. We cleaned them off the streets and clear out of town. Atlanta is mine again! <laughs> <laughs> And you have to admit, you enjoyed yourself when we marched down Auburn Street. That good-for-nothing Negro barber was sorry he hadn't closed up his shop. Well, he won't be shaving heads for a while. <laughs> I saw your face, Andy, when you broke his arm with that old axe handle. Well, well, we did good. We did good. <laughs> yeah, we showed those Negroes and those sissy whites who tolerate them that white men will fight for the honor and safety of their women. Now, if those meddling newspapers would stop printing all those lies about us and tell what really happened, we are heroes, and those papers, especially those Yankee papers, make it sound like we started the trouble. You know that liberal press ain't ever going to tell the truth. White men saved their neighborhoods and their businesses, and no interloping Yankee is going to tell me different. <laughs> we got the right to protect what's ours. Yeah. So, Andy. You think the colonel will see it that way? With the baby coming, Sally and I need every cent I can make. Thank you, Sally. Oh, no, I'm fine. Colonel, welcome. Would you like a drink, or Sally can make up a plate of her famous pork chops for you? No, thank you, Sergeant. I'm here on business. Which of you got in their heads that it'd be a good idea to disobey a direct order? My direct order? Who would be so stupid to risk court-martial and imprisonment? Ah, I mean, I'm talking three years of hard labor. Uh, no, Colonel, sir, uh, sir. It wasn't like that. Uh, honest, sir. Uh, we, we meant no disrespect. Truly, sir. We, we felt it was our moral duty as God-fearing Christian men to join our brothers to protect white women and children. And now, Walt, well, you know what Sorry, Perry is. Stevenson, you will address me by my rank, or I'll have you in chains tonight. Yes, sir, Colonel. I apologize for my lack, uh, lapse of decorum, sir. As, as Jack said, we meant no disrespect. We had only sought to lend a hand to restore the peace up in Atlanta and then return before dawn on Monday to Macon so that we would be ready if we were needed here. And it was my idea, Colonel. And Jack came with me out of a sense of family loyalty. Well, what did you two renegades accomplish? Oh, sir, Colonel, it was something to behold. <laughs> We met up with some others and marched down Auburn Street. Any shopkeeper who hadn't closed earlier in the day quickly regretted it. <laughs> we know one sorry excuse for a barber who won't be cutting hair for a while. <laughs> well, I guess I can overlook this breach of military protocol this one time. But if you ever disobey an order of mine again, You'll wish you were that barber on Auburn Street. Do I make myself clear? Yes, yes sir. sir. Oh, uh, 
And Andy, uh, Muriel saw a blue satin dress in your front window. Uh, she'll stop by tomorrow. And you'll have that all wrapped up for her and the account closed, won't you? Oh, yes, sir, <laughs> Colonel. Uh, anything for you and Mrs. Harris? Mm -hmm. 